Hello, and welcome to this quick video about how to achieve BIM Level 2 numbering using Advanced Steel. My name is Alec Giles and I'm a Structures Consultant for Grey Tech. I'm also an Autodesk Expert Elite. So, as BIM adoption grows throughout the industry and people getting involved in larger projects, more and more people are getting asked to comply with BIM Level 2 numbering. Uh, typically things like infrastructure projects or other huge projects, airports and so on, would use this standardised numbering system so that they can identify a drawing no matter who gives it to them or where that drawing comes from, they all use the same system and they can identify the drawing they require. How can we achieve this kind of specialist numbering in advanced steel? Automatically, that's the key, doing it automatically, not having to manually change things. I recently did a blog on this uh, on the Great Tech UK website, so you might want to look at that as well. I'll get a link put into the description below this video. So what is BIM Level 2 numbering? What am I talking about? Uh, to be strictly compliant with this BIM Level 2 standard, especially when you're working on large projects, one of the requirements is that your file names for your uh, drawings that you share and the drawing number in the corner or the title block of the drawing has to follow a specific special format which has different meanings and specialised meanings. This only really applies to general arrangement drawings that you're going to share with your uh, primary contractor or whatever on the projects but you need to follow this ISO standard format and that would be something like this. So you can see there the drawing number and the file name is split into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 parts there uh, by the dashes and each section of that number means different things. You've got the project number, the originator, the the volume, typically like a building or area of the huge project, the level, document type, uh, the role of that person making it, uh, the individual drawing number and the revision. Now if you look a bit closer at that you can see there that actually those three fields in grey, the originator, the document type and the role, for anything you give to uh, the main contractor or to a higher level company into this big project, they're never going to change for the drawings you create. Your name, obviously, as your company, is always going to be the same and the document type and role from your level is always going to be the same. So those are going to just be straightforward, ordinary text. They haven't got to be anything intelligent about those three parts of the code or number. But the other three, uh, the top, project number, volume and level, they're going to change depending on every project you do. And the bottom two, document number and revision, are obviously going to change on every drawing that you do. So how can you get these completed automatically? This is the key, getting them done automatically. So as you see on the top right there, we've got a document manager showing the correct file name, the full string, and you have a drawing title block there showing you the full drawing number. And this is important, it includes the drawing project number. And that is where things get a little bit more challenging than the other areas. So you have to include the project number in these areas. So let's first of all take a look at the title block. Well, this is actually very easy to achieve. When you start to think about it, there's no real need for the whole drawing number to be your single piece of text. If you try and make it a single piece of text, you're going to start hitting technical issues and difficulties. What you can do, we've got eight separate fields, so we can have eight separate pieces of text uh, some of those are fixed, so they can just be ordinary text, and some of those are changing, so they can be attributes, which can vary each time they're filled in. But when you read that, if it's laid out in the title block, as I've shown in the bottom right there, it can easily be read as a single string or single piece of number by any human. Let's see that in action then. So I'm going to go to the output ribbon here, and I'm going to choose the edit prototype. Now I've already prepared a prototype, I've just called it GUK BIM and you can see the title block I've made on here. So here's my title block, like so. And you can see, if I highlight it, I see the yellow text a bit better. Got the drawing number there, but it's not one string. I've made it into this long area. I've put these little dividing marks on there. If I go into the block editor, you'll see that the empty space actually has attributes in there. So there's one attribute for the project number, there's a bit of fixed text for the GRA, for Grey Tech, as the originator. And you can see it's ordinary text there. And as you go along, I've put in the project attributes for the uh, area and the level, or volume and level. And then you've got the little dashes between each one 
there's a DR for drawing and the X for subcontractor, the dash in the middle, and so on, for the different parts of it. So when that all gets converted into the actual values, when the drawing is generated, it reads across as a single string. So that's not too difficult to do. I don't need to change anything there, so I'm just going to close that and come out of the prototype. You can see that with the dashes and the ticks there, it will all read across. It look like one piece of information, even though it's made of separate sections. OK, that's the easy bit. Now we've got to get the file name right as well. So to get the advanced tool to generate the files or the drawings with the right file names, you're going to start off needing a new drawing process in your drawing process manager. And that new process is going to need a new file name selector configured correctly to produce what you need. Now if you look at the file name selector, an important part of that is the drawing name formula, file name formula here. And ordinarily you've only got a handful of tokens in this pick list to choose from. And those tokens are not sufficient to create a BIM level 2 file name. So this is where people hit barriers and start to struggle. What are we going to do about that? Well actually, first instance, there's more tokens you can use than are shown in that list. You can just try typing them in, something like percent user project attribute 1 will show you the project attributes and so on. So you can experiment with some of those and you can just find there are more available than you think are. But one of the biggest issues is getting the project number into the file name. And you can see that project number wasn't on that drop down list and that's been a feature request for as long as I can remember, at least 10 years, that's been a feature request to say can you put the project number and hopefully some other attributes in that pick list so we can make better file names. Hasn't been done by Autodesk yet, still looking at that list, it's still not got any of these extra attributes in there as you saw. But here at Greytech we can configure your system so the project number is in that drop down list. You can see there in the image, circled it for you in red, project number is on that list there. So we can configure that for you, even if Autodesk won't. And once that's in the list, you can create your file name formula using all the right different bits of attributes and fixed text as you need it to build up the full file name you need. You obviously also need to select the right prototype, so you can see the prototype is set to GUK BIM GAA3, so that's got my prototype with a special title block that has that long drawing number set up. So let's have a look at that. So, drawing process manager, here's my drawing process, I'm under user, processes, process steps, cameras, and I've got my prepared process here. And if I look at the file name selector, this defines what prototype we're going to use. So there's my prototype, and there's my thing. And you can see there at the bottom of the menu, I have got project number on my drop down list. So we can set that up for you so you can get it on there. You can create your file name formula that you need to get the required. Um, full combined file name and there you go so you can set up your own process you can add that to the system you're going to need to of course to create not just a step but create an actual drawing process as well so under drawing process I've got the same thing there calling up that process step and that can be shown on your drawing processes palette Okay, so let's have a look at that all in action. It wasn't too difficult to set up once you've got the uh, the right things in the right places. So the first thing, you obviously, you just do your modelling as you always would. There's nothing changed about how you create your models or anything. The important bit is you have to complete the project settings dialog box and complete the required fields. So we're using more fields than just the first couple of pages. We're using project attribute one and two as well. And then when you use your new drawing process, that will call up the right prototype and file names. So voila, you now have your correct file names. You can see a clip of Document Manager there showing the full file name in that required format with all the right data in there. And if you look at your title block, it's got that full string across the bottom there where those attributes and text have been completed. And it looks you've got the one long string there to read to match that file name. So let's see that live. Here's my model, it's a familiar model to many of you. You can see my file is just called BIM Nail 2 numbering, so 
but nothing special about the model file name. I'll go to project settings and I'll check they've got the title there, I've got the project number DS1 and I'll go to user attributes and I can use a couple of them so the volume and the level I'm using is 1 and 2 there 10501 and uh, we can start to create our drawings so I've got my custom process here and I'm just going to run that and tell you what I also show you that I haven't got any drawings already so you know I'm not cheating so there you go you can see my details says empty there. there's nothing there no drawings already existing I haven't already edited anything manually so now I'll run my new process just say all the cameras and it's going to do the, the correct prototype and the correct file name selector so I'll give that a moment or two to run through the cameras I've got completed those so let's go to document manager and have a look here we go there's all the file names scroll across a bit so you can see the full name there you go there's all the file names you can see they've all been generated they've all got the right format I haven't edited any of that or created that manually and when I pick any one of them and zoom in on that title block you can see I've got this project number, BIM level 2 example, somebody is the client and here's the full uh, project originator, volume, level and so on file name that's unique to each file and then the revision at the end so you've got that whole one long string there well it looks like one long string that can easily be read across as one file number or drawing number for any human and that matches the file name Tell you what, I'll put in a revision as well so we can see the last box filled in. So let's just uh, add a dummy revision here. So as always, when it gets revised, you can look at the file names, put the A on the end of the file name after the 00111. And if I look at the title blocks, put the A in the normal box in the corner of the title block. So you still have the full length drawing number with the A on the end which matches the file name with the A on the end. So it's all fully automatic, takes care of itself, you haven't got to think about anything after that. So that's how you can achieve your BIM level 2 numbering in advanced steel. As you can see it is perfectly possible to have everything running fully automatic with these drawing numbers and the file names. It can be all be generated automatically, there's no manual editing and overriding on each drawing. It does take a little bit of specialist knowledge to get the uh, everything just right so Greytech would be delighted to help you set that up on your system configure your system as you require if you need BIM level 2. Our services don't stop at just the BIM level 2 numbering of course while we're looking at your system and looking at your drawings we can help you with many other things and the most obvious one is the drawing styles. No matter uh, who does the drawing everybody does drawings differently so no matter what's in the box it's never going to match exactly what you prefer by hand so we can reconfigure the drawing styles to match more carefully or more closely what you like to generate by hand and minimize the editing time you have to do and it's not unusual for us to be able to reduce your manual editing time on the drawings by around 40% or more and it's not just drawing styles we can also look at other parts of the system so we could help you generate standard part libraries custom connections user sections custom bolts or anchors specialized cladding into the system and so on there's other areas too so we could look at the whole system to optimize your performance and efficiency with the whole of advanced steel so thanks for watching this i hope you found it useful check out greytech's website greytech.co.uk for the uk one look at the blogs there for advanced steel like i say i recently posted a blog on this exact same subject so you can check out the written blog there and subscribe to all the blogs um, so you don't miss it. There's over 100 on there. Lots of them are tips and tricks and ideas. And we also have a content centre with over 50 webinars uh, recorded there. You can watch as well. Thank you.